monism, shamanism, anim animism, pantheism, dualism. These are all tentacles of witchcraft. But let's see where in the Bible uh, they are described and condemned. Granted, these words are not in the Bible. They're man-made terms. But let's see where the Bible actually describes and condemns these. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 20 through 25. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things, wherefore, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. All these... You can study these different things yourself, but they all relate to the same thing. The verses I just told you about. Defined and condemned. How about pharmaceutical? Oh boy, we're, <laughs> this is a big one. Um, very, very big tentacle of witchcraft. Um, <clears throat> it's one of the primary methods for distorting, shaping, bending, changing reality, as we learned earlier, according to Margaret Adler's own words. And it's described and condemned in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Interesting how those verses describe the agenda of a pharmaceutical. All those different things lead to people saying, Oh, I think you need to take your medicine. You're, you're about to have a seizure. You know, uh, do we need to dig up your medical records? How about we up your dose? That's one of the different, the main components of mind control. And I speak from experience. Um, <clears throat> because I was forcibly medicated as a lost woman before the Lord Jesus Christ saved me. Now, pharmaceutical goes back to the Greek terminology of pharmakia and pharmakeus. And it's basically a variant of, this word is a variant of these, which means to practice witchcraft or use medicine, poison or medicine. This is also known as medication, i.e. by extension, magic, in literal or figure, figurative terms, sorcery, witchcraft. And this one means a drug, i.e. a spell-giving potion, a druggist, pharmacist, or poisoner, that is, by extension, a magician sorcerer. See how this relates to witchcraft? Hmm. Interesting light on all those uh, pharmacists in existence around the world. And all the medications you are probably given when you go to the medical goons for help. Pornography.
It is described in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 26 through 31. For this cause God gave them up to, un, into vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is <clears throat> against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do these those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Hmm, interesting. And Romans chapter 1 verse 32 condemns it. Because after all, pornography is based on pride. That's the base. That's the basis of it. Who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Hmm. Interesting. Psychic. Where is this described? Well, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 14. Jeremiah 14, verse 14. It says, Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. And um, <clears throat> I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart very very accurate description of psychics um, <clears throat> now where does the bible condemn this well let's go back to the book of deuteronomy Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 through 12. We've read these before, but they apply to this one too. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Very, very much condemned in scripture. Psychology. Psychology, according to modern terminology, uh, talks about mental health, mental illness, mental disease. But Webster's 1828 Dictionary says otherwise. Let's see. <clears throat> Psychology. Greek for soul and discourse. A discourse or treatise on the human soul or the doctrine of the nature and properties of the soul has nothing to do with mental health. For stay and Z, this right here, the definition of this term is a modern perversion of the true meaning of this word. And of course, this isn't even, this word is not in the Bible, but it is described and condemned in the Bible. So let's go to Colossians. Colossians 
Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. This is a branch of philosophy. And vain deceit after the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. And ironically, psychology uses rudiments of the world. Let's see what some of them are actually uh, are actually uh, called. Some idiom, idiom, idioms that are used as rudiments of the world. For example, everybody else does it. We always have done it. A little bit doesn't hurt. My conscience doesn't convict me. We know when to quit. You gotta make a living and get married. Or it all depends on how you look at it. Or scam or not, you still gotta do it. Or um, there are things in life you have to do whether you want to do them or not. Uh huh. Perfectly in line with psychology because psychology is a type of mind control. And mind control is witchcraft, as we said earlier. How about sadism? Sadism is defined and condemned in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 5, verse 5. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Sadism is a fancy word for self-mutilation. Also, torture inflicted upon yourself, and torture inflicted upon others and enjoying it. And uh, again, just like ESP, it is almost always connected to devil possession for lost sinners. Okay, next one is satanic ritual abuse. SRA, satanic ritual abuse. Where does the Bible talk about this? Both definition or description and condemnation. Well, again, Deuteronomy chapter 18 fits both the description and condemnation of the SRA concept. It describes it and condemns it. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 through 12. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Again, <clears throat> those verses are very, very indicative of several of these different concepts of witchcraft. Um, Satanism is the next one. Where is this described and condemned? It's described in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, verse 4. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Hmm. Interesting how that ties in with Satanism. Now it's Revelation also condemns Satanism. 
So let's turn to Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Of his name. <clears throat> so Satanism is worship of Satan via man. It could be a high priest. It could be, you know, a high priestess in your coven. It could be any one of the various titles in the occult that you want to place in this blank here. But that's the bottom line of Satanism, worshiping Satan through a man. And it's packaged in numerous fronts, such as Juridism, Demonology, um, Masonry, all kinds of things. The next one is Seer. Seer. And uh, <clears throat> it's originally talked about in 1 Samuel chapter 9. And actually, a uh, seer is a perversion of what God initially called it in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 9. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come, and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before, ti was before time called a seer. So, um, <clears throat> a seer was originally designated as a prophet of God. And like we've learned earlier and discussed earlier, Satan always has to copy God. You know, because of his pride, his self-righteous pride. So he has to copy and pervert everything that God does. Next one is sodomy. A very big topic today again. Where is this described in your King James Bible? Hmm. How about the book of Romans? Romans chapter 1 verses 26 and 27. For this cause God gave them gave them up into vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Women with women. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. Again, sodomy defined and condemned and um, <clears throat> but the but God also condemns it even more strongly in another part of the Bible way back in the beginning of your King James Bible how about Genesis chapter 13 verse 13 let's turn there and the verse says but the men of Sodom there's the root word there's the prefix of the word. Were wicked and, sinner, and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Sodomy is a, a very grievous sin in God's sight. There's no getting around it. You can't say, I'm a good person even though I'm a sodomite. Or any of the other modern names for it. <clears throat> How about... Uh, the next word is spiritists. Spiritists. This is also another term for necromancers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Necromancers by another name. Let's turn to the book of Deuteronomy. One of our favorite few verses in this because it applies to so many different things, as you'll see. 
Deuteronomy chapter 18 again, verses 9 through 12. <clears throat> When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For Stanzi. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. So, it's defined and condemned there. <clears throat> Trance. I'll give you an example. I forget what his name is, but he's a Jesuit. Jesuit trained Jesuit. And in a news report with some uh, news reporter, female reporter, she said the buzzword Holy Ghost, and he goes, that's a trance. That's a type of trance. And uh, <clears throat> a trance could also be something like Al Roker. Yes, that was the Jesuit's name. Al Roker. At, with the buzzword Holy Ghost, he goes, but if you also see someone as you're talking to them in a conversation and they go until you say whatever word that triggers them out of it, you know, if they're devil possessed, they'll usually go because <sighs> we saw, you know, um, I saw that in, in Gasland about a couple years ago when I was called on the carpet for uh, not wanting to attend church anymore. Yeah, uh, the hireling's wife there went into a trance until a certain word was said and then she snapped out of it and acted like she was interested in the conversation. That's another type of trance. But the Bible actually <clears throat> defines it in Numbers. Numbers chapter 24, verse 4. He hath said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. So basically, it is known as a passive state where your eyes are open. Depending on the, the sinner's status, um, <clears throat> if, if you're talking about a devil-possessed lost sinner, their eyes will almost always be wide open, like... <clears throat> so that's a type of trance. And last... Last term is yoga. Where is this talked about in the Bible? Let's turn to the book of 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 14 through 16. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communication hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. <coughs> And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So basically, yoga is idolatry by another name. And uh, <clears throat> if you study it, it again is a, a product of the whore on seven hills, the Roman Catholic Church and her daughters, because they, they use it in different forms like transcendental meditation, transcendental yoga, Different types of yoga are uh, involved with witchcraft, which you'll see later on. Okay, let's look at the historical facts. Because uh, <clears throat> a lot of you born-again King James Bible-believing Christian women and ladies out there are probably wondering, what's the history of witchcraft? And for all the uh, witches and warlocks out there and um, <clears throat> other lost sinners who are 
are just Cowan, but they, they don't know the history of this, you know, very, very fast growing religion in this country, this is, this is what you need to know. Okay. One of the objections that the Lord has shown me about, about witchcraft and currently practicing witches is witches will claim, oh, but the, but the Bible says that witches are to be burned. Okay. Let me, let me explain this to you right here and right now. The Old Testament of the King James Bible, the Old Testament ends with the death of the testator. Okay, Jesus Christ's death on the cross ended the Old Testament. And so, <clears throat> the Old Testament was a political religious system focused on Israel. The New Testament says nothing. You get that? The New Testament says nothing whatsoever about burning witches. They are called sinners, just like all other types of sinners out there. I was a lost sinner. I am now a saved sinner by the grace of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As a King James Bible-believing Christian lady, I am still a sinner because my flesh wars against the Spirit. Okay? But because of God's grace, you know, His righteousness is imputed upon me through His through shed blood on the cross to pay for my sins. Okay? So please do not think that you, if you are a practicing witch, that Bible-believing Christians are going to burn you. No. In fact, we're going to try and witness to you. And that is the whole point of the study. If you are a practicing witch, I hope for your safety and for the sake of your soul, you will come to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation and a repentant, contrite, and broken sinner. That is the only way. And, um, <clears throat> so... Basically, you need to also understand that the Old Testament was the Mosaic Law. And that is why the Mosaic Law was a political religious system. But in the New Testament, which, this, which, which uh, starts with Jesus Christ's death on the cross, it was, it's a system of grace. It's God's grace. Okay? Now, the next point is... Uh, I'm writing out this point too because you need to see this for yourself, okay? The Vatican's Inquisition. I hope you're paying attention to this if you're a practicing witch. Um, instigated the practice of burning witches and heretics. Heretics almost always meant back in the Dark Ages, back when the Vatican started its Inquisition practices. It almost always included Bible-believing Christians. Um, and uh, also, any of you witches out there that the Vatican got its hands on in the past. So, uh, just to let you know, um,
See that? Roman Catholicism is not King James Bible believing Christianity. Roman Catholicism has nothing to do with Christianity other than like Satan copies God and everything. Roman Catholicism stole the term Christianity for real Bible believing Christians like myself and others who are saved out there watching this video right now. They stole that term and called themselves as such Christians to basically say we're good people when they're not to hide their agenda. Roman Catholicism stole the term of Christianity and its true meaning and perverted it as a form of esoteric art. You know, giving one truth or giving one image to the public and behind the scenes uh, presenting a whole different image. Okay, so please, if you are a practicing witch right now in the system, please understand me as a King James Bible believing Christian lady, I am not your enemy. This right here, the Vatican, the whore on seven hills in Rome, Italy, Roman Catholicism, i.e. the Vatican, that right here, the Vatican is your worst nightmare, second to the devil, okay? The Vatican will, will never, ever, ever tell you what I'm telling you right now, okay? I am not your enemy, okay? Please understand this. Catholicism is not your friend. Next one. <clears throat> and of course they burned witches to, to destroy both the witches and the heretics. So um, that's why they burned them in the past. Another fact of your history is Roman Catholic Puritans, Puritans were essentially Calvinists because John Calvinist, or John Calvin, he was a Calvinist, and he was also a Catholic. If you research enough into the history of Calvinism, you'll understand that the Puritans were Calvinists and ultimately Catholic because they're a daughter of the whore on Seven Hills. So, um, again, Puritans, Roman Catholic Puritans hung witches in Salem. It was not Bible-believing Christians that hung your, your uh, witchcraft brethren in Salem. It was the Roman Catholic whore in Rome, Italy, the Vatican. Please understand this. Before the 1950s, good or white witches um, was a very unfamiliar concept to almost all Westerners outside of fairy tales and Walt Disney movies. By the way, Walt Disney was a high-level Freemason, okay? And um, I'll tell you how that relates later on. Another fact, the Witch's Rune chant was written by uh, Doreen Valiente and Gerald Gardner during the 1950s in accordance with Doreen's, um, what Doreen wanted. Um, I apologize if I'm, if I'm, you know, cutting her name up or something and mispronouncing it. Um, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but that's my best guess. In 1951, England legalized witchcraft, which led to the British invasion of white witchcraft authors such as Cybel Leak, Ms. Cybel Leak, Mr. Gerald Gardner, Mr. Raymond Buckland. And uh, also from this legalization of witchcraft in 1951 in England led to the U.S. film Bell, Book, and Candle, which introduced most of America to the word warlock for the first time. And it was known as an experiment for the good witch concept, you know, to be mainstream mainstream uh, terminology via a platinum blonde, you know, witch versus a good guy. And of course, you know, anytime you 
you see, uh, you hear about the term platinum blonde or, you know, people tell you, oh, you know, blondes are such and such. Well, ironically, the whole concept of, bla of platinum blonde goes back to witchcraft because uh, just like Hitler, you know, Hitler was a reincarnationist. Hitler tried to destroy the the non-blonde genes in uh, in the Catholic Nazi era because he was a reincarnationist. And so people saying, I have to have blonde hair to get attention. I have to have blonde hair to be popular. I have to have blonde hair to on down the line. You're under my control. If you're trying to change your hair to blonde because you think you'll be accepted, don't do it. Okay? It goes back to witchcraft because you're under mind control and social engineering to make yourself feel less accepted and less worthy. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> this film led to the repackaging of the Bell Book and Candle film. It was repackaged as the TV show Bewitched, which unfortunately I saw as a child growing up and I had no idea what I was watching. But it was witchcraft by another name. How about this guy right here, Gerald Gardner? He formed his own branch of Wicca, and uh, Gardnerian Wicca arrived on U.S. soil during the 1960s via Raymond Buckland and his wife Rosemary. And guess what they did? They created. They created Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. And I actually heard about this when I was at Fort Sam Houston in 2003. And uh, a couple people from my training unit, AIT unit at the time, asked me if I would go. And I said, no, that looks really creepy. So I didn't go. But I saw promotions for it. And guess what it's repackaged as, what it was initially called. How about Cecil H. Williamson's Museum of Magic and witchcraft that was taken from Castle Down, Isle of Man in England and brought over here to the United States of America in the 60s. Repackaged as Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. Hmm, interesting. Next we have, and this is quite revealing, It. Hmm, how about this? 1966 was the origin of the Church of Satan. And ironically, what do they call their female members? Witches! And guess what their founder, Anton Xander LaVey, wrote? The complete witch, or what to do when virtue fails for for the church's female Satanists, otherwise known as witches. How about that? But for all you practicing witches out there who say, we have nothing to do with Satan worship. He's not our deity. He has no place in our, in our structure, in our system. Then what are you doing? Why is your name being used in the church of Satan for the female members of the church of Satan? And let me tell you, I used to know as a lost woman, I knew a member of the church of Satan. His name was Scott Theodore Peasland, who hailed from uh, Buffalo, New York area. 
He was a member of my AIT training unit at Fort Sam Houston, Texas in 2003 and 91 Whiskey uh, Combat Medic Training. So yes, I have actually run across a Church of Satan member. Okay, so interesting. Witches are also named for female members of the Church of Satan. How about that? By the mid-1970s, many Wiccan leaders adapted to lax moral standards and admitted to welcoming Sodomites in their covens, which led to the order of Ganymede and Dianic covens and also entire new Wiccan Sodomite rites. Check out that word. Hmm, what else uses right? A whole host of other uh, occultic type of organizations. Hmm, interesting. Next, we have the Franklin Credit Union scandal and cover-up in the 1980s. I have the book right here. I've read it from cover to cover. And uh, I'm not going to say much about it other than the fact that uh, it ties in very, very well with the subject of witchcraft in many ways. Uh, then you have the Modern Morris drug slash witch cult of 1989, which soured Wicca's public relations image. Oh, how sad. Now, then you also have many witches have sought out Roman Catholic Church priesthood. Get that for their lifelong magical learning. Hmm, how about that? But uh, witches have nothing to do with Satanism and Catholicism. Then what are some of your witches doing seeking out Roman Catholic priesthood? Hmm? Explain that one to me. How about about 80% of the New Age concepts were borrowed from witchcraft and repackaged as upscale, scientific, and trendy? Huh. How about that? So all you New Agers witches out there, you're witches by another name, whether you want to admit to it, to it or not. Okay? How about your earliest surviving record, extant of Wicca. Where is it? Huh, it was talked about in the... Laws of Alfred, around 890, which implemented statutes against witches. Hmm. So you mean to tell me at one point, uh, witchcraft was actually, a uh, had laws passed against them, but now they have laws that are in favor of them and calling them a religion? Hmm. Yeah, that's something. How about Dr. Margaret Murray? Hmm. How about that? She was the patron scholar who was most responsible for 20th century Wiccan revival. And she describes in one of her books how the high priest king or divine kings slain is vital to Wicca. Hmm. And yet Wiccans use her, Dr. Margaret Murray, to prove their ancient history. Hmm. Let's see about that. How about Don Juan Mattis? I, I don't know how to say the, his last name. Don Juan Mattis, a Yaqui Indian sorcerer in Mexico. Check that out. Mexican sorcerer. Played a major role in introducing shamanism to the pagan Wicca movement. So again, paganism is tied back to witchcraft and Wicca. How about, uh, you remember Gerald Gardner from earlier? He wrote what's called the of shadows hmm the title sounds very creepy to me i don't know about you but i'm you know that sounds very very uh revealing shadows book of shadows uh also known as the witch's bible or rule and law book composed by godfather quote-unquote godfather gerald gardner and his buddy 
Aleister Crowley. If you know anything about Crowley, he was a big time well-known Satanist. Hmm, how about that? A Satanist helps a Wiccan author to write a well-known book, the Wiccan Bible, Book of Shadows. Oh, but you're not tied to Satanism now, are you? Hmm, what are you doing having a Satanist on your, on your crew of authors? Hmm? How about, uh, another interesting fact. How about two of modern Wicca's leading public figures bragging about their public links with Crowley? And guess who they are? again. One of the previous authors we had just mentioned earlier on in this section of historical facts, Ms. Seibel Leek and Mr. Alex Sanders. They openly brag about their connections with Crowley. Hmm. I guess that kind of refutes your, your claim that you have nothing to do with Satanism and Satan as a deity, huh? How about uh, your famous scholar? Here she is again, Margaret Adler, your Wiccan neo-pagan neo scholar. She says that there were ecumenical gatherings of neo-pagan groups that almost always affirmed Crowley's cardinal ethical teachings. She openly admits to Crowley's teachings being a part of these ecumenical gatherings of neo-pagan groups one of your most respected scholars. How about your Wiccan read, if I'm saying that correctly, I don't know, um, being comparable to Aleister Crowley's Book of the Law. Huh. Why are there eerie similarities between the two if you're not connected with Satanism and somehow not connected with Satan as a deity? Hmm. Explain that one to me. I'd like to know. And I have another Another thing, another fact slash question to point out to you. Why do your bibliographies include almost all of Crowley's major books? Why? If you're not connected to Satanism, why do your bibliographies, your own sources, trace back to Crowley's writings? How about uh, your high priest? Why do they study the Church of Satan's Bible, the Satanic Bible, if you have no connection with Satanism? Hmm? Why is that? Why are your high priests required to study the Satanic Bible from the Church of Satan? Okay. How about uh, the Witches League for Public Awareness? Um, I'm just going to go through a few of these, but... Uh, how about witches do not do evil? That defies the basic definition of what we've discussed earlier in this study. You know, they were classified in various tongues. They were labeled as one who curses, troubler, various forms of, you know, evildoers. Oh, but you don't do evil. Hmm. Then, uh, according to the witches of Salem, the do's and don'ts of witchcraft, according to the source, witches do not worship Satan. Well, we've already seen thus far in our, in our historical facts session that uh, you're tied to the Church of Satan. 
your high priests have to study the Satanic Bible from the Church of Satan. Hmm. Interesting. How about witches wear clothing of every style and color? They come from every socioeconomic and ethnic, ethnic, ethnic background. Yeah, that explains it. That ties back to the uh, linguistic origins. How about uh, your claim that a male witch is not a warlock? Well, hate to burst your bubble actually is not a problem for me at all. But I will say this. The Lord Jesus Christ has shown me over the past several weeks of preparing for the study that um, your own sources have, I should say, former witches who are now King James Bible believing Christians have admitted to the fact that male witches are called warlocks. Okay? So you can't duck it. How about witches do use spells? Hey, that's true. Because it ties back to witchcraft. You know? Um, <clears throat> a spell is a thought, a projection, a prayer, or an enchantment. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Witches do use magic wands. Witches do use witchcraft as a science, an art, and a religion. Again, this ties back to what we've talked about so far. And, of course, they claim we're just nature-worshipping people. No, you're not. You're Satanist by another name. How about, in witchcraft as a science, we view the pentacle as the golden section, a geometric shape, and a talisman. Hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. And how about, witches do concern themselves with ecology. Of course, because that is a public relations front. And yes, you know, there are some ecological tentacles and aspects to witchcraft and Wicca. But the bottom line is, you're still a Satanist by another name. I don't care how you call yourselves of whatever sort. How about um, <clears throat> one of the most t widely taught and held ethical beliefs in modern Wicca is the threefold law of return. Again, going back to karma. Have you ever heard the term, what goes around comes around? Yeah, that's karma by another name. A aspect of Hinduism. Again, tied back to witchcraft. Hmm. And actually, a former landlord of mine, when I was a lost woman years ago, in 2006, um, she told me exactly that one day. Um, if you've heard my testimony from Lutheranism to Salvation, uh, parts one through three, I talk more in detail about what happened with this landlord from 2006. And she said in those exact words, she said, what goes around comes around. And I was, in, I was ignorant at the time. I had no idea that that was a karma concept, a Hindu concept. Is she a Hindu? I don't know. But whatever she calls herself, she's a Roman Catholic by another name. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, how about uh, you even claim that you, you don't know your source of universal wisdom? Well, what is that? Uh, that's a form of, of false illumination. Because, like we read earlier in James chapter 1, verse 5, you know, I'm paraphrasing here, God gives wisdom liberally to all men and upbraids it not. Okay? And you can go back to James chapter 1, verse 5 for the exact wording. Um, but the point is, you know, if you as witches don't know where your wisdom comes from, then how do you know it's accurate and true? Why not ask God, the source of all wisdom and all, and all truth, and ask him to give you the wisdom you're seeking? Because your leaves won't tell you. I guarantee it. How about the fact that your religion is based on an amalgamation of legends that does not match reality? Just the simple fact of legend, just the simple word legend, it's, it points to myth. It points to Disillusions. I mean, it's most likely spoken and not written down. So how do you know it's true? How do you know it's accurate? How about uh, for thousands of years, witches were viewed as weird, frightening, and dangerous. But yet, all of a sudden, through their peer image polishing and whatnot, just like uh, psychological operations go goons and, and spooks do, you know, they changed their original description of weird, frightening, and dangerous to 
I'm a good white witch. I don't do black magic. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, but a different spin on it. Okay, how about the fact that your definitive guide, Gardner's Book of Shadows, recommends using marijuana and its rituals to gain the third eye of sight and list drugs as a number two path of the witch's wheel or your eightfold path to magic. Doesn't this sound like a certain Eastern religion uh, that is a daughter of the Roman Catholic core on Seven Hills, i.e. the Vatican? Doesn't this sound kind of eerily familiar? Eightfold path of enlightenment? If you want to know what that is, you can study it for yourself. But I don't want to give away how this, uh, how this relates to the diagram I'm going to be showing later. Um, but let me just, let me just tell you something that is very, very, uh, interesting and very positive. When the King James Bible is preached and believed and lived by sold out Bible believing Christians who uphold God's word, the King James Bible, and live by it, there is freedom. There is religious freedom and tolerance in a country. And this country has been blessed mightily by God thus far because there are a lot of us Bible-believing Christians out there who care enough about your soul if you're practicing witch or new ager or whatever sort of Satanist you are. We care enough about you to tell you the truth out of love. We are trying to give you the facts you need to say, hey, I want out of the system, okay? We're not doing this out of hatred like you've been led to believe by your leaders, you know, we want to reach out to you and and let you know that there is a way out of your system. And so <clears throat> when a country has a large number of King James Bible-believing preachers in it, living by God's word, you know, preaching and teaching God's word, God will bless that country and he'll do great things for that country, regardless of all the other problems it has, because people are standing for his word. That's why there's religious freedom in the United States of America right now. And also, another fact of your history is the occult, and its various forms and, and names, is the fastest growing religion, quote unquote religion, here in the United States right now. Because it's called different names. And a lot of people aren't aware of the different tentacles of this religion. How about the fact that all you Wiccans and witches out there claim that your matriarchal uh, old religion predates Christianity. Well, this is, this is mixed lies and mixed truth. And um, <clears throat> let me just read to you a few verses, okay? John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Okay, you get that? God has, is, has always existed. He is both um, present, past, and future. He is the beginning and the end, the alpha and omega. Okay, so... If you want to be technical about who dates, who predates who, it goes like this. God is first. Then you have Babylon. Also the Tower of Babel. Another verse that, that talks about God predating man and everything else, um, night and day, Creatures, plants, the whole, the whole thing, the whole nine yards. Colossians chapter 1 also says basically the same thing as John chapter 1. So let's go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 through 17. For by him, God, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, 
and by him all things consist. Okay? You get that? So, God and the Godhead predates your system of religion. Got it? Then you have Babylon, because man tries to say, I'm going to find, I'm going to work my way to heaven, you know? And man tries to push God out of the picture in Babylon. And we can see that in Genesis chapter 10 and 11. 